What's up YouTube, Adam here, and in this video, I'm going to be bringing you my full review of this, the CalDigit T4. Now, this device, I've got to say before we start, is absolutely spectacular. It looks incredible. You can see it there next to the MacBook Pro, and it really does just fit absolutely perfectly. As you guys know, I love premium products, and I love the absolute luxurious look and feel of the CalDigit T4. But, into the review itself. Now, you can use this as a extra bit of storage for your Mac Pro, your MacBook Pro, your MacBook Air. Regardless of the device, you can use it so long as you've got a Thunderbolt port. Now, this particular one is the 4 bay version, and this is indeed the 4 times one terabyte version. They do go right the way up to much, much higher capacities, which you can buy as separate units, so you do have the flexibility to pick and choose the size of the storage that you want. Now, as you can see on the front, we've got the four bays, and then round on the back, we've got the Thunderbolt ports, one for plugging it into the device itself, and one for passing it through to the next one in a daisy chain formation. We've also got a little Remington lock there, as well as the power supply input. Now, like I say, this thing really does look absolutely spectacular. I've been so, so impressed with it. I really am gonna continue to use this for a long, long time. Now all of these bays have keys, so you can go ahead and lock them up if you want to. Now in order to get the actual bays out of the device itself, you use a little ejector tool, very much like a SIM ejector tool, and you just remove the drives. Now these come with the Toshiba one terabyte drives, but like I say, you can go much, much higher in capacity, way over the 16 terabyte mark. And on the front, we've got some really nice little LED lights to tell us what the activity is of the four drives in the device itself. And in addition to that, we also have a Thunderbolt cable, which we're going to need to connect it to the laptop in this case. Now, obviously, you can use this with a MacBook Pro. You can also use it with a full-blown Mac Pro or an iMac or a MacBook Air. It's completely up to you. Full flexibility. So long as it's got that Thunderbolt, you can use it no problem at all. Now I've chosen to connect it to my MacBook Retina here, the Pro version. And once you've actually got it connected, you install a bit of software and that enables you to do a whole bunch of different things. Now first up, you can just look at the configuration of the device itself. You can see here I've got this in a RAID 5 configuration. It tells me all of the details about the drives themselves, how much overall capacity I've got, the temperatures, all of that kind of stuff. And it also monitors as well, so we can set up a whole bunch of notifications to tell us if we have any problems with individual drives or the overall RAID, anything whatsoever it's going to inform us about. Now the actual icon itself, I've got it set up huge here, but just so you know, I've only set that manually myself just because the icon looks incredible. Absolutely love the icon. Now, what I'm gonna do now is just run some benchmarks. So we will select the T4 itself. We're gonna set this to the highest 4K setting that we can, and then we're just gonna choose a file size here. I'm gonna go for four gigabytes. And then what we can do is just run a speed test against that. You can see on the right speed, we're getting just over 500 megabytes per second, right away up there to 530 megabytes per second. And on the read, we're getting around 600 megabytes per second as well. So even in a RAID 5 formation, which gives you resilience against a single drive failing, you get ridiculously fast speeds. So, so impressed with the speeds out of this thing. Now, as you can see here, you can actually use it in a RAID 5 formation right the way up to 10-bit 422 uh, 4K video, no problem at all. As you increase it up to 444 12-bit RGB, you might drop a few frames, but nothing significant. So very, very fast indeed. Now, within the software, we can also change the RAID configuration. So I'm going to just go ahead here and delete this RAID 5 container. And then what we'll do is we'll set it up with zero resilience, zero redundancy. So we're going to set that up in a RAID 0 formation, which basically stripes the data across all four drives at once. And in fact, once we're in here, you can see we've got a whole bunch of different configurations that we can use. We've got uh, JBOD, if you want them set up as individual disks, uh, RAID 0 for striping, which is what we're going to do now, which is the fastest option but with zero resilience and then we've also got raid one which will mirror and then we've got raid five as well which we saw a minute ago so here we go we've now created a full four terabyte drive there which you can see because we've using all of the capacity of all of the drives zero resilience 
and you can see there in the application we've got RAID 0, 4 terabytes, all of the drives are working fine, we can see all of the temperatures and all that kind of stuff in there as well. Now let's run a speed test against that to see just how much faster it is than the RAID 5. So again, 4 gigabyte file, highest 4K setting, and wow, right the way up to close to 720 megabytes per second on the right, and on the read, nearly 760 megabytes per second. This thing is absolutely phenomenal. You're going to get the fastest storage possible with the largest capacities with this thing. Now, this is actually faster than a lot of SSD devices that are out there on the market today, so very, very fast speeds, and in addition, to that you're also getting the larger capacities as well now just to show you that it's not their application that is making it look fast or anything like that I've got the Blackmagic design app here just to test out those write and read speeds so we can see them separately from the application that comes packaged with the product and you can see here 694 megabytes per second on the first pass uh, on the right and then 743 megabytes per second on the read absolutely phenomenal speeds from these particular settings that we've got here now in terms of my overall opinion of the cow digit t4 i've got to say i'm going to be actually getting an even bigger version of this i'm going to be buying the 16 terabyte version this to me is absolutely invaluable and in fact in the future i've got a new review coming up of the uh, another cow digit device which is the ts2 so be sure to keep an eye out for that one but this one for me is one of the highest recommended products i can give you Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you all in the next one.